or in the EMS. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started, everyone. Everyone could go ahead and uh, gr grab their last amount of uh, food and uh, last chance at the bar and uh, take a seat. We'll go ahead and get started with our program. We have a few stragglers at the buffet who are very hungry. <laughs> That's okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so welcome everyone. Uh, my name is, for those of you that are guests uh, here tonight, my name is Bob Newmar. I'm chair of the Department of Emergency Medicine here at the University of Michigan. Uh, and I am just uh, delighted that we are here today uh, to celebrate the 2023 graduating class of our U of M St. Joe's uh, Residency in Emergency Medicine as well as our fellowship programs in pediatric emergency medicine, critical care, EMS, education, and, and ultrasound. First and most importantly, I want to thank your families, significant others, uh, friends, and su other supporting uh, casts in, in your lives uh, for getting you through this challenging and hopefully rewarding time of training. And I just want to start to have all those who've supported our trainees uh, stand up for a round of applause. Awesome. Family all the family members, uh, significant others, friends, children, you guys deserve a tremendous amount of credit. Uh, so really, really appreciate that. And for, and for our graduates, uh, just want to acknowledge that you have achieved a tremendously important milestone in your careers, uh, graduating either from one of our, you know, our residency training program uh, or a fellowship. But I do want to emphasize that it's not the finish line. So uh, if, uh, if you engage in that, there, you have the opportunity to continue to learn uh, throughout your career uh, and, and, and become an even better physician scientist, uh, administrator, uh, whichever uh, career path you want to you pursue, you know, if you embrace that opportunity. Uh, and it, continuing to grow and continuing to learn uh, throughout your career will really uh, be a key to a sustainable and successful uh, career in, in emergency medicine uh, as well. So I want to encourage you to think about the opportunity if you, if you 
uh, undertake it, you have the potential to learn more for the remainder of the, your career than you've learned already. I also want to acknowledge that uh, this class is special in, in, in the fact that you had, uh, there's not many classes that we've had that have had a global pandemic dropped right in the middle of their training. And, um, you know, the fact that you had to train in the middle of this COVID pandemic really is a testament uh, to your resiliency. When you think about it, right, you learned things that many classes before, many classes uh, moving forward will not, will not have the chance to learn. Diagnosing and treating a new highly contagious disease with rapidly changing understanding of the pathophysiology, the mechanisms of transmission, the diagnostic testing that is reliable, the prognostication and treatment. Uh, in the years and decades to come, you will have stories to tell uh, that many of your colleagues that come after you uh, will not have the opportunity to. So I encourage you to sort of keep in your mind all those experiences that we, you know, as we move on in our careers, we tend to forget, but this is really just a unique experience that you had to go through. And I'm very proud of the way you stepped up to do it and thankful uh, for how you've helped sustain our department and, and the care of our patients throughout that period of time. So I just want to acknowledge that special contribution as well. Finally, I want you to keep in mind that um, you will always be a member of the University of Michigan St. Joe's family. We want to continue uh, to be engaged with you as you, in your career endeavors moving forward and hope you will, will want to do the same. Um, you know, emergency medicine is a really close-knit community, uh, and no matter where you go, whether you stay locally, stay uh, with our organization here, go across the country, as many of you are, uh, we really hope that you will continue to stay engaged with, uh, with our program uh, as, as alumni and as part of a, a, a greater family of Michigan medicine uh, trainees uh, moving forward and take advantage of that networking uh, that can be uh, helpful in your career advancement, helpful uh, for the trainees that are here uh, that uh, follow in your footsteps. So as emergency medicine physicians, you will have an important and lasting impact on the patients and families in the specialty of emergency medicine. We look forward to watching you succeed and continue to create the future of emergency care. And at this time, I'd just go ahead and like to raise a glass to the class of 2023. Thank you for all you've done for our program, and we wish you great success in your career to come. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Laura Hobson. I'm the Associate Chair for Education. I want to congratulate every single one of our graduates from all of our training programs tonight. It has been a joy to have you with us and an absolute wonder to see you grow from really scared starting interns to the amazing expert clinicians that you have developed into and to know that this is just the start of an amazing career for all of you. So we wish you all the best and celebrate your successes tonight. I'm gonna to turn this over to Rob Wong, who's going to start with uh, some of the awards. Hi, everyone. Yeah. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Rob Wong. I'm the residency program director uh, for the EM residency program. Uh, to begin, uh, we are going to be doing some awards uh, for some of our graduating residents. Uh, our first award, if I can grab them in order, uh, is the uh, Professionalism Award. This is voted on by the residents and faculty to award a graduate who demonstrates consistent commitment to the highest standards of the medical profession. Uh, this award goes to uh, Natalia Rosculet, who is not here today because she's in a wedding, um, but uh, I promised her I would turn to camera where her parents may be watching um, and congratulate her um, because she is amazing and very deserving of this award. So please join me in congratulating her. Thank you. 
Our next award uh, is the in-training exam award. Uh, this is given to uh, a resident for outstanding performance on the ABEM in-training exam. Uh, this award is not exclusive to graduating residents. Uh, we give it to the resident who gets the overall highest score. Uh, we had run one resident this year uh, who received a perfect score on the in-training exam, uh, and that resident and the winner is Jordan Sell. I'm going to make a total mess of envelopes here. I'm so sorry. Um, our next award is the Essential Peace Award. Uh, this is an award that goes to a graduating resident who, without a formal title, has contributed significantly to the growth and development of the residency and their peers. Uh, this year, we would like to give the award to David Liu. Our next award is the Exemplary Patient Care Award. Uh, this is given to a graduating resident voted on by the faculty, by the residents, for someone who really demonstrates exemplary patient care in the clinical environment. Uh, this year's winner is uh, Chinonso Agabosum. Uh, our next award is the Scholarship and Research Award, which is given to the graduating resident who most demonstrates outstanding scholarly achievement during residency. Uh, this year's winner is, win uh, winner. Winner is Jessica Doan. <laughs> Uh, next, we have the Senior Resident Teaching Award, which is given to the graduating resident who has made an outstanding contribution to teaching with students, with residents, just all around. Um, and this year's winner is David Liu. I keep making you butt your coat. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Um, okay, our final resident award is actually uh, an award we haven't given before. Uh, occasionally there are residents in the program who make a significant sort of contribution and do really amazing things that don't like easily fall within like a single category. This year there was a trio of residents who did a lot of work in like innovations, uh, which is not something that every year we have someone sort of like do to this level. Um, for their work with engineering, with device design, with design thinking, we'd like to give a special award for innovation to Matt Gerswinski, Max Rathel, and Mustafa Abdelhamid. <laughs> Those were the final residence awards. I technically have a few other things. Um, every year we give the Golden Apple Teaching Awards to the faculty with the highest uh, teaching ratings from the residency. Uh, we award this to faculty member from each of our four main clinical sites. The University on the Adult Side, the University in the Children's uh, Emergency Department, at Trinity Health Ann Arbor, and at Hurley Medical Center. Um, this year our Golden Apple Faculty Teaching Award recipients are first from Hurley Medical Center, Jim Weber. I don't know if he's here. Yeah. 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 Uh, from Trinity Health, Mike Sisala.
Yes, yes. Yeah, you have to come up too. I have to come up and shake yeah. your hand too. Yeah. Thank you. Here you go. Yeah. Um, from uh, the Adult Emergency Services at the University of Michigan, uh, Woodrow Sams. He is like actively in the wilderness with his family right now, so he couldn't be here. Uh, and from uh, Children's Emergency Services at the University, Sarah Tomlinson. Okay, last one, I promise. Um, there are, uh, we typically give what is called a program service award to folks who have made significant contributions to the residency team. We have uh, several folks who are leaving the residency team this year. Uh, as many of you know, like the assistant program director team is instrumental in really making the program run. They are advisors, they are mentors, they are coaches, they are friends, colleagues, just like overall amazing people. So as they move on to sort of the next things that they are doing with their career, we want to like especially recognize um, Mary Haas, Carrie Harvey, and Sarah Tomlinson for everything that they have done for this residency program. Come on, come on up, come on up. Where are Carrie and Mary? There they are. Okay. Of course, I took yours out of package last. First one. Thank you. Obviously not. Yeah. Yeah. None of them are actually leaving the institution, but still. Um, okay, that is the residency awards. You will be hearing from me again later, uh, so apologies to you all. But I will turn this over to, um, I believe, Mallory with the clerkship awards. Mallory Davis, I'm one of the medical education fellows and APDs and assistant residency, uh, excuse me, assistant emergency medicine clerkship directors. I am here to uh, give out the awards for the clerkship. So the first that we're going to start with is uh, the medical student teaching awards for um, CES, so for children emergency services. These uh, are for physicians that were uh, outstanding teachers to the medical students and for um, this wonderful group of people, Meg Wolf, Tim Vesklosky, and Andy Hashikawa. <laughs> oh, do we? No, we'll, no. No, if, not because we don't love him. Just excellent. Thank you, Andy Hashikawa. Um, for the adult emergency services, we have uh, Nate Hunt, Mary Haas, and Jenna Thomas. For Trinity Health, formerly St. Joe, still St. Joe in my heart, um, Amanda Wood, Emily Mills, and Peter Emily. For Hurley Medical Center, Mike Safa, Chad Green, and Dominique Borjali. And for the resident uh, teaching awards, Sarah Perez, Will Sturvant, Carrie Bales, Shoshana Rudin, and Nikki DiMartinez. <laughs> and for my next award, for the SAM Resident Teacher Award, this award uh, is nominated by the clerkship director and uh, the program director for a resident who is an excellent teacher with skills and interests that are beyond what the typical resident is doing and outstanding teaching with residents and with medical students and this is for David Liu. Please come up, you are the one that's allowed. <laughs> And 
that's all for the clerkship awards. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Michelle Carney. This is Sarah Tomlinson, Eric Berry. We're the Pediatric Emergency Medicine Leadership. We'd like to give um, our awards to, so we, our fellowship has six fellows, and so sometimes one fellow may win lots of awards because we have so little, but um, our first award goes to given to the fellow through their actions has demonstrated commitment to carrying out exemplary patient care, adherence to ethical principles, and sensitivity to a diverse patient population. This commitment is ev evidenced by their interactions with patients and family. This is in addition to conducting themselves with the highest level of integrity. So we have a tie on this one. It's Alicia, who's one of our first year fellows, and Liz, who's one of our graduating fellows. Our teaching award is given to the fellow that has consistently provided outstanding clinical teaching during the past academic year. You know, wait till she sits. It's Liz. <laughs> Sarah and Liz, our graduating fellows, will give the faculty awards. Hi. Liz is going to be joining me. I'm Sarah. I'm one of the um, two Peds Emergency Fellows this year. And um, we are going to be presenting the awards for our faculty. Um, every year we get an email. and. <laughs> They tell us to vote for these awards, and every year we struggle because we feel like so many, if not all of our faculty, deserve all of them. Um, but I'll start with the first one. Uh, this is the FaceTime Award, and it's awarded to the faculty member most engaged in supporting fellow education. Um, and this goes to Dr. Natalie Schelfeffer, who I don't believe is here, but yeah. Um, our next award is for fellow development. Um, this is for the faculty member who exhibits outstanding commitment to developing um, fellow independent practice um, and is also just a really amazing human and it goes to Dr. Sarah Tomlinson. Uh, the third one is the Excellence in Mentorship. Um, this award is awarded to the faculty member who has consistently provided excellence and mentorship to our fellows in the areas of scholarship, patient care, modeling professional behavior, and commitment to long-term professional development. This goes to Dr. Meg Wolf. All right, and then the uh, next one is the Golden Apple Award. Um, this is awarded to the faculty member who has consistently been um, uh, an outstanding teacher, provided excellent clinical teaching, um, as well as um, excellence in didactic education, um, while encouraging independent practice. Um, and this goes to Dr. Allison Cater.
And our last award go, um, is called the Bedside Teaching Award, awarded to the faculty member who has consistently provided exemplary bedside teaching during the past academic year. And this award goes to Dr. Tim Vyskoski, who is also not here. transition to um, diplomas. So every year, pediatric emergency medicine, um, we have two fellows per year, and we are excited every year in getting these fellows. Um, the, the year 2020 is when Sarah and Liz came to, to us, and uh, it was a tough year, as everyone knows. But we got through it, and I, I think goodness that she that those two were the two that I got that year because they just rolled with the flow and they did everything they could to learn everything um, we'll start with Sarah Sarah came from a small um, residency and when she got here she was like whoa look at all these resources she's like I want all of them I'm gonna learn so much and she did. She learned a lot. She chose a research project that was very complex, but she's getting through it, and it's going to be a paper, and we're really excited for her. And, um, and she's absolutely been a delight to our fellowship, and we're so very honored to have had her. And um, not to mention all that she's learned, all the resources she's taken advantage of, to become an excellent PEM clinician. Congratulations, Sarah. Liz is our next fellow that's graduating. So Liz came from a, a bigger institution, but came here and just hit the ground running, did an awesome job. And in the winter of her first year, she said, you know what, Dr. Carney, I'm bored. You guys just bore me. I need to do two fellowships now. So what she did was she joined the ultrasound fellows in her second year. So she is not only a PEM fellow, but she's an ultrasound fellow. You will never see Liz without an ultrasound machine. Just through the department, teaching, ultrasounding, she is an incredible clinician and we're so lucky to have her. She uh, was quiet at first, but just recently we had a, re a recess together and I had to sit in the corner because she just took care of business. And I was so proud of the voice that she now owns. So we're so happy and congratulations, Liz. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ryan Tucker. I'm the director of the Ultrasound Fellowship. Uh, and I have uh, Nicole Kukowski, who's my co-director of the PEM Focus Fellowship, and Nicole Capizano, who's my co-director of the Family Medicine Ultrasound Fellowship. We're thrilled to have five graduates to tell you about uh, tonight. Uh, I'm going to start with Will Croft. So come on up, Will. So Will was our first ever fellow uh, to complete a combined medical education and ultrasound fellowship. It takes a certain amount of bravery to be the first fellow uh, in a program. We were fortunate enough that Will was able to take that risk and, uh, and uh, embark on it with us. Uh, typically, medical education fellowships are two years, and ultrasound fellowship is one year. So we were asking uh, Will to complete three years effectively of training in two years. He was asked to complete all the requirements of an ultrasound fellowship in that first year. 
and start work on his master's degree in that same year. Only someone with exemplary administrative skills and a strong work ethic would be able to pull that off. And as you, if you guys know Will, Will has both of those in spades. Um, Will was able to do this in relative ease uh, as he was singularly the most organized, the most persistent, and probably the most dedicated person I've ever come across uh, in medicine. Uh, in typical Will fashion, he would later suggest that we reform the program curriculum to better balance the ultrasound and medical, edu medical education aspects of the program. So only someone as talented as Will would be able to fix his own program while he was completing it, um, but that's, that's just what he does. Um, among Will's many strengths, the one I admire probably the most is his capacity for self-improvement. He's always asking for constructive feedback. He's constantly working on the things that he perceives as weaknesses, even though they probably aren't. Uh, it takes a lot of humility and honest self-reflection to do this. He works just so hard to get better every single day. I found this very inspiring uh, as his uh, program director. It's been a true privilege uh, to be his fellowship director. Um, we don't have to say goodbye to Will, fortunately, because he's staying with us as faculty in the ultrasound division here at the University of Michigan. Um, he'll be the assistant program director for the residency uh, and the director for the ultrasound curriculum of the medical school as well. So he's taken on a lot in year one. Um, he's already such an accomplished academic physician, and we know this is only the beginning of a very successful career, and we just congratulate him. Congratulations, Will. Uh, as is tradition, we'll do the knighting ceremony. So please, uh, please kneel before me. <laughs> yeah, do it, do it in front, so people can see. All right, there you go. All right, Charles William Croft, may you rise as graduate of the Elson Fellowship. <laughs> All right, Ahmed Hussein, come on up. All right, Ahmed has been a pleasure to have as a fellow. Uh, he came to us all the way from New York to train with us. Um, early in his fellowship, he quickly became a favorite among his coworkers, the PAs, the nursing staff. Uh, it's easy to see why. He has such an easygoing way about him, and he has a great sense of humor. Um, among the many things he accomplished this year, uh, Ahmed was tasked with running the ultrasound portion of the emergency medicine preparatory course. So this is a month-long curriculum uh, for fourth-year medical students who are going into emergency medicine. He did an exceptional, exceptional job uh, running that course. I'm going to quote one of the students who completed the course, uh, whose evaluation of the course uh, sums up Ahmed better than I ever could. Here's what they wrote. Uh, Ahmed is a fantastic teacher, both in didactics and in hands-on settings. He's highly knowledgeable, while also being down to earth with a great sense of humor, which made these last two weeks a lot of fun. He also provided great advice and perspective on other emergency medicine career topics. When we were scanning, I thought Ahmed struck the perfect balance between allowing us the time to optimize our own views and while stepping in to provide clues when we were struggling. Now, Ahmed will continue his career at Ingalls Memorial Hospital in Chicago, where he's on course to become their ultrasound director. He's already been tasked uh, with starting an ultrasound-guided peripheral IV training program for the nursing staff uh, in that department. We're so proud of what he has accomplished, and we're excited to see what he'll do next. Congratulations, Ackman. All right, kneel before me. Ackman Hussein, rise as graduates of the Elkstone Fellowship. All right, Jafar Mahmoud, come on up. All right, we knew Jafar well before he started his ultrasound fellowship, as he was a resident here and is a proud graduate of the ultrasound track. Uh, he's been a fantastic ultrasound fellow, and we've enjoyed expending uh, the one additional year working with him. Uh, Jafar is impressive in many ways. Uh, his teaching style is one example. Jaffer is a naturally gifted, hands-on teacher. He's so good at meeting learners at their level. He's very patient when teaching people at the bedside, and he's always helping the learner find their way and putting everyone at ease. Uh, another thing I really admire about Jaffer is the pride he takes in his work. Uh, he wants to take great care of his patients. He strives to provide the best teaching to all of his trainees, 
He aims to master every aspect of musculoskeletal ultrasound and regional anesthesia. Um, he has sought out experts outside of the emergency department to learn from. He spent countless hours working with experts at the U of M and at the VA to expand his knowledge and develop his skills. Being a true expert takes a real passion for a topic, and Jeffrey has his passion uh, for pain medicine. It's been a pleasure to be uh, just one step in his journey uh, towards that goal. Uh, Jeffrey's next stop is the University of California, Davis, where they compl we will complete a pain medicine fellowship. This guy simply cannot get enough fellowship training. Uh, all jokes aside, um, after he completes that training, he'll have a truly unique uh, training background and skill set. There's a great need for experts in pain management and emergency medicine, and he will surely advance the practice of pain management in the emergency department and beyond. Congratulations, Jaffer. Wish you all the best. Dr. Liz Budnick, can you please come forward? So my name is Nicole Klukowski, and I'm the uh, director of the Pediatric Emergency Medicine Point of Care Ultrasound Fellowship. Um, and this is a special honor because this is the first time I get to present a fellow for graduation. Um, so Liz, as uh, Dr. Carney mentioned, has completed two fellowships, uh, Pediatric Emergency Medicine and Ultrasound, during her time here with us. Um, she, um, I, I want to highlight several of her accomplishments. Um, first of all, she presented not one, but two cases at the P2 conference, which is the International Pediatric Emergency Medicine Point of Care Fellowship Group. Um, and so two years in a row, she was um, selected to present a case at an international conference. She also um, last year won the Ultrasound of the Year Award for Pediatric Emergency Medicine here. And um, I've had the pleasure of serving with her together on the Gender Equity Professional Development Group. Um, I cannot say enough wonderful things about Dr. Budnick. She is an amazing teacher. Um, she has impeccable clinical acumen. And she has a remarkable steadiness um, that she continues to just move forward and get things done. Um, so I am so proud to call her a friend and a colleague. Uh, in her next steps, she will be going on to Seattle Children's Hospital, and we will miss her dearly. But we wish her the best of luck, and she'll be joining the ultrasound group there, and I think she's going to be doing outstanding. So with that, I will ask Dr. Budnick to come forward, please. Hello, my name is Nicole Capixano. I am a family medicine physician. I don't know if you remember, but I was the first fellow from family medicine that did an ultrasound fellowship here at the emergency department. And now I am going to call Dr. Sebastian Schneid to come here, if he is here. I am so happy and so proud to introduce Sebi today. Uh, Sebi graduated from family medicine in 2022. Uh, uh, he joined this first uh, fellowship for the combined program for family medicine at the emergency medicine department. Uh, I don't, basically I don't know what to say about how wonderful has been Sebi for us. Uh, Se during this fellowship he did such an amazing job. He presented a couple of uh, uh, research at the American Institute of Ultrasound and Medicine. He also presented a poster at Society of Teachers of Family Medicine. Sebi has been working so hard with our residents in family medicine, as well as with the ultrasound track in family medicine. Uh, Sebi is really, really well loved for all our patients 
because of his, uh, he, he is able to speak different type of languages, including Spanish and Italian. He has several patients who speak Spanish and a cl our clinic who is in Ypsilanti, and he has been able to help all of our patients over there. It's so fantastic to see, to see Sebi how he teaches faculties at the family medicine department. And, and I have to say, because of Sebi, our program in uh, point of care ultrasound and family medicine is growing. Our uh, family medicine residents wants to be like Sebi, a person who, uh, who knows everything about POCOS. Our faculties wants to be like Sebi because Sebi is able to teach them as well. I really gonna miss him, but we're also so happy that he's gonna be working in a reservation in New Mexico, and he's gonna start teaching POCOS and enjoying everything that he can do over there. We're gonna miss here, him, but I know he's gonna be happy to enjoy all this environment. Sebi, please come here. I have the great pleasure to announce to our two graduates from the Medical Education Fellowship. So in the past few decades, medical education has really become recognized as a distinct specialty that contributes to all of our learners and uh, helps build better clinicians. In pursuit of developing that expertise, we have a medical education fellowship and are delighted to have two graduates this year. The first of whom you've already heard a little bit about, and that's Will Croft who completed a combined ultrasound and medical education fellowship to pave the way, hopefully, for future uh, trainees to uh, continue to build their expertise and skill set in this domain. Uh, Will trained with us uh, in the residency, obviously completed his dual fellowship, and we're delighted that he's remaining with us on faculty. I don't even I know he was here. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Jenna Thomas. We were delighted to have Jenna join us from uh, the Mayo Emergency Medicine Residency two years ago. She has left an indelible mark on this program uh, through her work with simulation and the residency and just about anything else we could throw at her. And uh, we um, are absolutely certain she will be happy and successful in her new role as an APD at the uh, Washington University St. Louis Emergency Medicine Program. <laughs> Dr. Brent. Hello everyone, I'm, I'm Christine Brent. I am the EMS Fellowship Program Director and the Director for the 
with the chief of the division of EMS. I have my kids today. So, well, two or three. Um, and I am excited to present the diplomas for our two graduating fellows from the EMS Fellowship. So EMS Fellowship is Emergency Medical Services, for those of you who don't know. So it's a unique fellowship in that it is entirely based out of the hospital. They do almost no time in the hospital at all. And so they're working with the paramedic crews, the fire crews, the police crews, the tactical team, the technical rescue team. They're meeting with the state level EMS administrators, um, sitting on state committees, doing regional disaster committees, doing QA work, protocol work, all outside the hospital to ensure that when you call 911, the time that you get seen by the, well, the dispatch, the providers come to getting to the hospital, that care is optimized. So it's a little bit of a unique fellowship, um, but we've been very excited to have two fantastic fellows this year. I was very proud of this year because it was our first class with not only one, but two female EMS physicians. Um, that's extraordinarily uh, rare in EMS, which is predominantly a male um, field. And so it was heartwarming and they both did fantastic. Um, so I will start with Megan. Dr. Witt came to us um, from the East Coast and she, uh, sorry, um, you can come on up, Megan. She came to us from the East Coast and was sort of, um, her enthusiasm and her ability to just jump right in was outstanding. I think one of the best ways to describe her would be relate to some stories of her interactions with the survival flight nurses. So the survival, I can just take her if you want. <laughs> um, it's been a little while for you, Laura, so. Um, but the survival flight nurses are some of the kind of high, best trained critical care paramedic nurses in the country. And they found Megan just amazing. They were so impressed with her, her ability to jump in, become part of the team. So it took Megan about 30 minutes to make every single one of those nurses who are some of the most critical and judgmental people in terms of a clinical care perspective, fans of hers. They felt like she jumped in. She, every shift, she said, what can I do? How can I be better? What can you teach me? How can I help? And she has made that program, which is already one of the best in the nation and best in the world, even better. And that's a very, very difficult high bar to meet. Um, so I just want to say thank you to Megan for everything she's done for us. She's been a fantastic fellow, and we're happy to say she's going to Eugene, Oregon, one of the prettiest parts of the country, to pretty much enhance and improve the EMS system out there. And next comes Sarielli Sandoval. You can stand up. So Dr. Sandoval came to us from Beaumont. Um, I remember getting a phone call from Dr. Swore, who's one of the like original EMS physicians. He was the past president of the National Association of EMS Physicians, and he called me about her. And he said, you know what? She's late to EMS. She just sort of decided she wanted to do it a couple months ago, but I think we have a gem. Will you take her? Will you train her? Can you help me? I said, absolutely. So we were excited to match Sarielli, and she has absolutely exceeded every expectation that I could have possibly set for her. This woman's done, been absolutely amazing. Her interpersonal skills, her communication skills are perfection. Everyone that she interacts with absolutely appreciates and adores the interaction. And her, her ability to provide appropriate medical care on the phone to the paramedics when they're in difficult situations like recently, a 300-pound intoxicated male who's statting 77% and had a heart rate of 160% and wanted to refuse transport to the hospital. And the provider said she's not safe to stay home and he doesn't have capacity. She was able to navigate the situation, talk to the family, talk to the medics, talk to the police, talk to the fire department on scene to try to get him safely transported. When they realized it wasn't possible, 
Then she said, for the safety of the crew, let him stay. She sort of navigated a very, very intense, difficult interaction to provide the best care that she could within the limitations of the situation while keeping the, her providers safe. So I, was, I read this medical review. I read the chart from the paramedics, and I was, no joke, teared up because I was so proud. She couldn't have done that um, a year ago. And it was, doesn't, might not mean a lot to you, but it's, it was very impressive. So. Um, Thank you. And she got engaged three days ago. That's it. I don't have any swords or anything like that, so we're just done. All right, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Cindy Shu. I'm the Division Chief of Critical Care. I am really proud to be here today to introduce uh, our two graduating emergency critical care fellows. So here at Michigan, we have the option of uh, training our emergency critical care fellows through two different pathways, one through internal medicine, pulmonary critical care, and the other ones through anesthesia. So this year for our internal medicine uh, critical care program, uh, I'm proud to present Dr. Um, Mallory Abney uh, as our graduating fellow. So Mallory came to us from uh, having finished his uh, medical school at VCU where he actually uh, not only completed his uh, school of medicine training, but also managed to uh, uh, continue his training as elite athlete and qualify for the 2016 Olympic as a 400 meter hurler and then proceeded to go to UVA uh, for his emergency medicine residency where he was a chief resident. And also there he got very interested in medical education uh, and leadership in that domain as well as uh, health services in the in their health uh, reserves. Um, and so he came to us two years ago and has since just flourished. I think one of the, the best uh, traits about um, Mallory is not not only his towering height. So he and I, if you, <laughs> you've seen us scanning things, he's a, I think he's over a foot tall than I am, and so that makes procedural supervision a little bit challenging. But he is, I think, one of the most friendliest and warm uh, person that you could meet, and incredibly engaging and collaborative, not only with our trainees and his faculty, but also with our staff. So he's well beloved uh, by everybody who's ever worked with him, and I, don't, I think I'm not just making a disclaimer. Um, so I'm happy to announce that he'll be, we managed to recruit him, and so he'll be staying with us, uh, basically splitting his clinical time downstairs in the ED and ED ICU, or EC3, as a nocturnist, and also starting his ICU time in the trauma burn ICU. So he has joint appointments, not only with the Department of Emergency Medicine, but also with acute care surgery and um, home critical care. Um, so uh, he's not here today, unfortunately. He's actually at DC leading um, the Learner Summit Conference as the chair of uh, the uh, resident representatives organization. So I'm really excited for her to have Dr. Abney uh, staying with us. Uh, the second fellow that I'm going to be announcing today is actually Dr. Uh, Adam Gatula, uh, who is uh, also not here today because he is concurrently at the Anesthesia Critical Care Fellowship graduation. Um, so Adam came to us from uh, Cincinnati where he did his uh, med school and residency training. And uh, there he developed a, a really a, just a huge interest in uh, pre-hospital critical care transport, uh, particularly in flight uh, helicopter transport. And he uh, came to us uh, having established that um, uh, expertise and also interest um, and wanted to expand that to uh, look at uh, the eligibility and implementation strategies of ECPR in the pre-hospital setting. And so he has since, uh, I remember meeting him for the first time at a cafeteria where he showed me his five, ten year plan. I was actually a little overwhelmed. <laughs> I said, wow, this is, you clearly know what you want to do. He's been incredibly productive. Uh, his work in um, using geomapping to look at the increase of eligibility uh, criteria for ECPR patients uh, across the country uh, has been uh, 
been actually won uh, multiple national awards and presented on uh, several different platforms. And uh, he's at, and also um, uh, basically is going to be he's going to be going to uh, uh, the Methodist Hospital at San Antonio for for two years, where his wife is finishing her military obligations, and we're, we're hoping that we can recruit him back to Michigan afterwards. So happy to announce uh, Dr. Katula as our graduating anesthesia critical care emergency fellow. Uh, thank you. I will. We'll make sure the presence and everything gets to them. APD team, it's time to come up here. I see you all. Okay, closing out uh, the um, diploma. So residency, I think everyone who has ever been a resident would say is a fascinating experience. Uh, there are not a lot of great corollaries in other professions, in like other lives. You are a learner, you are a student, you are a doctor, you are an employee. You're expected to grow and develop so much personally and professionally, but also like navigating the high stress and like high stakes environment of like patient care in the emergency department. It is not always easy. Um, it is, and I often say it is hard to see the growth that happens day to day, but that it is something that like we are able to like certainly see by the end, and I see it for all of you. I have seen it for all of you. We have all seen it. You are all, all of our graduates are such amazing physicians. They've contributed so much to this institution. They've contributed so much to Trinity, to Hurley. They've contributed so much to the patients and the communities who they have served and to whom they are going to serve moving forward. Um, we are all so lucky to have been able to play even like a small part in the journey of all of the tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of lives that they are all going to touch for the rest of their careers. Um, for each of you, as I call your name, please come up uh, and join this like conga line of hugs uh, before we give your diploma. Uh, Mustafa Abdelhamid. Mustafa, while he was in residency, uh, he completed the uh, ultrasound track and the critical care track. Uh, next year, he is going to be a critical care fellow at Stanford University. Chino Agabosum, come on up. Sorry, it takes a village in residency, so there's a lot of us. Um, Chino uh, completed the uh, pediatric emergency medicine and the global health track. He was one of our chief residents. If I had to describe him as a chief resident, I would uh, call him like a like consistent force of reason. Um, next year, he will be a disaster medicine fellow at Harvard uh, Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. Jake Begris. Chino, Chino. <laughs> uh, while uh, in residency, Jay completed our ultrasound track. Uh, next year, he will be working at CHI Memorial Ho Hospital in Chattanooga, Tennessee. <laughs> Nikki D. Martinez. Nikki completed the ultrasound track um, as well as the Healthcare Administration Scholars Program. Uh, she was also one of our chief residents. Uh, if I were to describe her as a chief resident, I would say a consistently strong moral compass. Uh, next year, she will be working at uh, St. Joseph Trinity Health in Syracuse, New York, not Ann Arbor, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Jess Stone, you get to come up next.
Jess uh, completed the critical care track as well as the Healthcare Administration Scholars Program. Uh, she was also one of our uh, chief residents who I would describe and distill down into a like calm, focused presence for all emergencies. Um, next year, she'll be working at Valley Medical Center in Renton, Washington. Uh, Matt Krzywinski, please, please. While Matt was in residency, he designed his own design thinking and innovation track, which he completed. Uh, next year, he's going to be an attending physician at Thomas Jefferson University. <laughs> Michael Hovenden, I see you already walking up. Yes. Take your time. There's a lot of hugs. <laughs> Uh, while in residency, uh, Michael completed the ultrasound track. Uh, next year, he will be an advanced emergency medicine ultrasound fellow at University Hospitals in Cleveland, Ohio. Adam Kadri. Adam com completed the uh, Pediatric Emergency Medicine track and the Healthcare Administration Scholars Program. Uh, he was also one of our chief residents. If I had to describe him as a chief resident, I would say that he is the person who always tells it how it is. Um, Adam will be working as an attending at Trinity Health Ann Arbor. David Liu. Uh, David uh, completed the medical education and the ultrasound tracks while in residency. Next year, he's going to be a critical care fellow at Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit, Michigan. You all are so good at knowing the alphabetical order of your class. You all stand up before I say anything. Sarah Perez. Uh, Sarah completed the critical care track while she in, was in residency. Uh, next year, she will be staying at the University of Michigan for her critical care fellowship. Uh, Max Rathel. Max uh, completed the critical care track and an individualized research track while he was in a residency. Uh, next year, he will be doing a critical care fellowship at Stanford University. As I mentioned previously, Natalia Rossiolet uh, couldn't be here tonight, um, but she will be watching this ceremony, and I would be remiss if I, we didn't celebrate her as well. Um, she completed the critical care track and the Health Administration Scholars Program while in residency. Next year, she will also be an attending at Trinity Health Ann Arbor. Vikas Shahi. Vikas uh, created and completed an individualized sports medicine track while in residency. Uh, next year, he's going to be a sports medicine fellow at Cleveland Clinic. <laughs> Will Sturdivant. Uh, Will completed the uh, ultrasound and the wilderness medicine tracks while in residency, and next year uh, Will will be working for Greater Midlands Emergency Physicians in Mid-Michigan. Raf Sweet.
Rafi Sweet. Um, while in residency, Rafi completed the ultrasound track and the Healthcare Administration Scholars Program. Uh, he is signed with Envision to work at Trinity Hospitals in Livonia. Yeah. <laughs> and Sarah Vermillion. Sarah completed the Healthcare Administration Scholars Program and Critical Care Track while in residency. She'll be working with American Physician Partners at McLaren Greater Lansing Hospital. Yeah, and please join me in congratulating all of our graduating residents. I'll now turn it over to Laura Hobson. So before we uh, sort of close down the main part of the uh, uh, ceremony tonight, we're going to take a little bit of a break so that everyone can uh, sort of reset. There's a video in, specifically in honor of the residency graduates that people are welcome to stay for. There also should still be desserts in the back. But the most important thing tonight is to th congratulate everyone for this monumentous achievement and the start of an amazing new career.